Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Julie Haleska, Vice President of Business Development for Centauri Health Solutions and your KHAM webinar chair. The agenda for today is as following. As you can see, we're going to have welcomes. A little bit about Centauri. We're going to introduce the presenters. We're going to talk about strategy and then we're going to have a mindfulness and meditation session and the questions and answers. So let me just talk about our presenters. Carrie Krupp, Director of Recruiting at Centauri, leads Talent Acquisition Solutions and has managed talent strategy, diversity recruitment, and social media initiatives in healthcare, financial services, and publishing. In addition to bringing top talent to Centauri, Carrie has spent 15 years teaching yoga, mindfulness, and meditation. Carrie has the opportunity to build Centauri, Centauri's very own corporate mindfulness and meditation program. Jennifer Cooper, Employee Relations Director at Centauri, has over 15 years experience in human resources and organizational development, and Jennifer is focused on developing sustainable workplace policies and procedures, creating a motivational cultural and culture, encouraging productivity and top performance, and delivering desired organizational outcomes. And now I will turn it over to Jennifer. So thank you so much, Julie, for the introduction, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. Carrie and I um, would like to spend some time with you and share information that we hope will be helpful and also take you through an exercise that will leave you feeling calm and rejuvenated. So before we get into the exercise, we do want to talk a little bit about um, this challenging time. So in 2020 and continuing now into 2021, the world's been faced with challenges that combined could be described as the perfect storm. It's been made up of events that many have never been faced with before individually, let alone all at the same time. Um, we've been faced with a global pandemic. There is social unrest. There's been political turmoil, uh, employment uncertainty, financial insecurity, mental health challenges are at an all time high and virtual schooling just to name a few. Um, this has been a time where emotions are erupting and people are feeling fearful. Uh, maybe they're overwhelmed or sad. They feel a level of distrust about some things that are going on or even angry. And so it's causing people's personal lives and professional lives to have collided. And it is, you can hear the call, this, this panic that is either in your employees' um, lives, your, maybe your own lives, or even as an employer, you hear that call, mayday, mayday, mayday. And, and what do you do? What do you do with all of this stuff that's going on? And so what we hope is we can share some information of what Centauri did um, that maybe will be helpful and useful in, in some way. So at Centauri, we came together as a leadership team and went through a process to understand what was happening, how people were feeling, what they needed, and figured out how we could support our associates and at the same time, keep our business running and continue to service patients and members on behalf of our clients, which when you hear all that is no, is no short order. So we stopped to listen first. We had to understand how people were feeling and what help or support they needed. So some examples for us, you know, related to COVID-19, we needed to understand how our decision as an organization, we decided to send our entire staff to work from home how that impacted people, um, how that was gonna impact our business operations, or how employees who worked on site at hospitals felt um, and how we could best support them and make them feel safe and still meet the client demands that were happening. Um, when it comes to social unrest, after the killing of George Floyd, we had listening sessions where associates could share how they were feeling. Emotions were, were very, very high. Um, their personal experiences they could share or even just express support to one another and just be there and be good co-associates and, and peers. We had individual conversations with associates about their personal situations. And that ranged from uh, working at home, maybe not being able to meet HIPAA requirements and how we could overcome that, domestic abuse situations. So if there's domestic abuse in the home, a lot of times people were coming into the office and getting away from that. Now they're working from home. How's that impacting them? Health risks, feelings of seclusion. When people went home, they started to feel like they were on an island on their own. Um, or how to remain productive when all of this is going on and how you don't get distracted and still get your job done. So we learned that many associates just needed to know that we heard them. That was 
it sounds simple, um, but really a lot of times we don't stop to make sure that people feel that way and that we had sympathy for what they were experiencing. That doesn't mean that we could solve every issue, uh, but just acknowledging what was important um, and that they knew that we cared. Then we had to learn from all that. So we stopped and we listened, but then we had to learn from it. What did we take from it? And we had to really be curious and be open to hearing and seeing things in a different way and really seek to understand. So once we did that, we could adapt to these unprecedented times and unique challenges. And while we had to make overall company decisions, we also balanced that with not everything could be a one size fits all approach. Um, we had to stop saying things like no or we can't. So before we would have said, we can't have our entire staff work from home. That's impossible. That's absolutely crazy. Um, or we would say, we can't talk about social unrest or political issues. It's too risky. It's uncomfortable. I don't want to do that. Um, but once we listened, acknowledged, learned, um, from what we heard and adapted, then we could start to take even more action than we already did. And each of the challenges that have been thrown our way presented us with opportunities that really allowed us to grow as individuals, as leaders, and, and as a company more than we've ever had the opportunity to do before. And then in addition to all of this, we supplemented already established communication channels like newsletters and emails that most companies already have in place we facilitated more direct communication. Um, so for example, we conducted pulse interviews. The human resources team met individually with about 10% of the staff at all different levels, different locations across the country and a variety of roles to see how this work from home initiative was working for them, how the tools that we created and provided were working um, and if they were helpful and what additional support they needed so we can continue to evolve in that. We made sure daily and weekly team huddles were happening to stay connected to staff. And we provided webcams um, to utilize video meetings to support the sense of belonging and connection. So people could still feel like I can see my peers, I can see my leaders um, and still feel like there was a little bit of a connection even though we were all at a distance. And again, the listening sessions with the leaders and staff. And then we also allowed flexibility and schedules to support virtual schooling. The virtual schooling really became a challenge for a lot of parents. And so we had to become flexible and figure out how we could um, be as flexible as we could, but again, still meet the client demands and, and do the best on behalf of their members and patients. And um, we created work from home tools and training materials. And we made sure that associates also knew about our benefits that were there to support them during times like this. So our employee assistance program, um, our time off programs, our Centauri Foundation. So we have a foundation that for qualified situations will provide financial uh, assistance or grants that people could apply for. And so we made sure that we continue to communicate those things. And then in addition to that, we supported our leaders on how to have challenging conversations with their direct reports, which is critical because leaders had to be open to having conversations that they may not have all the answers for. Um, they would need to talk about things that maybe they're uncomfortable with or that was scary for them. And they have to be able to problem solve in the moment and make some decisions. And so you have to make sure you also provide them the autonomy to do that, but also the skill set to be able to do that. Um, and that when they didn't know how to do that, that they had support and places to go when they didn't know what to do so that they also had um, someone, you know, that they could turn to. So I could go into many options and ideas, but to touch on one last offering that was significant for Centauri to support our staff we created a centralized hub for resources and communication known internally um, as Centauri Connected. And Centauri Connected, you can see here, has um, is really focused on four main areas. There's the section about the company, which that focuses on things like our core values, our strategic goals, company communications maybe that come from our CEO, um, or business highlights, things that are happening or evolving with our business. And then the second section there, other associates, is an area to spotlight associates. Um, we have show and share, um, where sometimes there's themes, whether it's for certain holidays or 
um, you know, things maybe with people's families, just to bring a little bit of personal touch to, you know, keeping people connected. We also do special milestones like anniversaries there. And then the third section is the work. And that's where we would provide tools, the training offerings. Um, you know, when we transition people home, we created work from home best practices, all of the tools that they could use as resources as they went through some of this challenge. And then the last section there is yourself and focuses on wellness. And it houses a very special program and a unique offering called Zentari. This is a program that focuses on mindfulness and meditation. So I think you'll notice that in addition to stopping and you know, listening and acknowledging and learning and adapting and acting, we really, really supplemented and focused on communication. And I think that that is a critical part to what helped us have such a smooth transition um, and really made it as bearable as possible to go through a really challenging time. So while the specific ideas and programs or offerings may be different for your department or company, the general ideas that I just said, so the listen, acknowledge, learn, adapt, and act, can be a general guide that helps you chart your path. If you step back and just apply those and, and think a little bit about how do you want to go about facing some of these challenges, it at least was a good guide for us. So I know I've said a lot in a very short period of time. So before we go into the exercise um, with Carrie on Zentari, I did want to just do a little bit of a pulse check and see if there's any questions so far um, that we can we can answer now. We're also going to be happy to answer any at the end of the session after Zentari. And you can submit your uh, questions in the question section. I don't see anything there or the chat. I'll just give you a couple more seconds, see if anything comes up. And please don't feel you know hesitant to ask details about some of the programs, the conversations, whatever, we're, we're happy to help. All right, well with that, um, I'm going to pass it over to my friend, um, colleague and co-presenter, Carrie Krupp. She's the mastermind behind Zentari, and she's going to talk to you about this program and then take you through an exercise to experience it for yourself. So, Carrie? Thank you, Jennifer. I'm coming on uh, with my camera, I believe. Let me know if this is working. So thank you so much. Um, my name is Carrie Krupp and uh, I adore and love working with Jennifer who was really the strategic um, driver of all of these efforts that were so important during these, this past challenging year uh, and making Centauri a very welcoming and supported place for our employees. I wanna talk a little bit about um, myself and how I found mindfulness and meditation because I was definitely a very unlikely customer. Um, as a person who on a scale of a one to 10 of intensity usually hovers around an 11 or 12, known as a type A, A++. Um, and for many of us who are really committed to our professional lives, um, that, that quality tends to flow into other areas of your life. So if you're a high achiever professionally, uh, like to meet goals, exceed metrics and, and deliver, Usually that tends to find itself into your personal life, um, into your relationships, family and friends, into your communities of what you'd like to give. Um, and that can be um, a lot of giving, a lot of withdrawals from your account, if you will, um, a lot of depleting of the resources. And it took a personal tragedy for me to slow my role and slow my pace and to stop. Uh, to take a look and a listen and be willing to start to understand um, how to fill up that battery, how to recharge, um, and how to replenish that account so there was more to give to others. And so the theme that I want to stick with today is sticking with our turbulent waters uh, motif. And uh, the quote is as follows, you will never stop the waves, learn how to surf. 
And so I want to share some really tactical um, and accessible ideas and tactical tools uh, and what the master surfboard and learning how to surf and, and what tool is the key in the master surfboard. As Jennifer went through that list, this past year was a confluence of a million different things that led to really a traumatic time for many of us, uh, incredible amounts of stress and strain on us personally and the personal world and the professional lives really came together. Um, the tools that I had the um, good fortune to learn, it's actually 19 years ago this month, uh, March is my anniversary month, uh, was the gift of a yoga practice with mindfulness and meditation. Uh, because in order to manage the waves, the tools that we can use are already within us. And that's the beauty. If we're able to slow down, be a little receptive, a little open-minded, even for that intense type A++ personality, um, if we learn how to leverage being able to actually utilize the physical body that we're given, and many times in the day, we don't actually stop and, and take time to feel our body or, or be in it, except when we feel stressed or anxious um, or hungry or tired. Um, so to use the body, use the ability to slow down and come to this present moment. And then the ultimate master surfboard for all of this is learning how to leverage and use the breath that's with you 24 seven. It's never gone. You never have to look far for it. You don't have to pay for it. It's there. And so I'm going to walk us through a little exercise. Um, I will ask if you have not put yourself on do not disturb, please do that. If you can silence any dings or bings around you, this will just be 20 ish precious minutes. Your calendar is booked so people know that you are busy um, and to elevate the challenge, maybe even turn away from the video camera. If you're looking at the screen or, or sit beside your computer, have a comfortable seat, whatever that means to you, maybe on the floor, maybe in a chair maybe laying on the floor, reclined, uh, or even in a bed if you're working from home. Obviously, if you're uh, somewhere else, not home, maybe not laying down. But I'll give you a moment to silence, to turn away, and to give yourself the gift of 20 undisturbed minutes, and we will walk through um, some exercises together. If you have a pen and paper handy, maybe grab that as well, because um, there'll be an opportunity to jot down some things, jot down some things that click, jot down some things that don't click, um, jot down some things that were comfortable and welcomed, and even jot down things that felt uncomfortable because that's great information. So as you take your comfortable seat, give yourself a little physical jiggle, shake your arms, maybe flap your arms side to side, maybe side bend a little bit side to side, totally do something that you don't typically do in your work day. It could be jumping up and down for a moment, shaking out your legs, giving yourself a wiggle and just come into your body, even if it's just shaking your wrists, opening and closing your palms. And then after that, find a comfortable seat. That is whatever it means to you. There's no right answer. I'm sitting on the floor because that's comfortable for me. My legs are folded. That is comfortable for me. If you're in a chair, your legs can be uh, just flat to the floor, straight down and let your feet touch. Notice whatever is touching the floor, the bed or um, the chair and whatever touches, let that become heavy. Give yourself a little rock side to side and maybe grab your knees and feel your seat press down and engage your core a little bit to lift your spine up. So from the waist down, we're pressing and really grounding, almost like making a footprint in the sand uh, of support, but deep, deeply heavy. But from the waist up, we are light. If you are sitting, imagine the crown of the head making this nice straight line over the tailbone. And I'll invite you to turn your palms up. That's a position that reflects being open to receive. Maybe you're receiving some new ideas um, and concepts today. If you're in the chair, your hands can rest on the armchair near a desk, feel free. The invitation is going to be to let your eyes soften or close. Some people are not comfortable sitting still with their eyes closed, so maybe just gaze at some object, a soft gaze, maybe a blurry gaze uh, in the distance, something that doesn't move and definitely not a computer screen. Soften, soften the eyes, and if they can close, allow them to close. And the same with the lips. If the lips can close and the breath can travel through the nose, that is the goal, although of course, if there's any congestion, then allow your breath to travel in and out softly through the mouth. We're gonna give ourselves the opportunity to really settle into this moment. So together, take an inhale through your nose, pause and hold that breath, filling up the lungs, feel a little uncomfortable. And then a long sigh out your mouth, let go of your morning, let go of your day. 
let go of whatever's transpired, almost like a balloon that all the rest of the day drifting off into the distance. Second breath, take a deep breath in, 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 and with a sigh, feel yourself being here in this moment right now. This is exactly where you're supposed to be. You ended up in this session for a good reason. So just feel that, ah, I'm here and I've arrived. Third inhale, deep, deep breath in, fill, 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 and hold. And then with a sigh out the mouth, just think about being open. I am open, I am receptive and not needing to do anything. You're just here to receive. Much of our day is giving and doing. And in this moment, you get to just go back to being a human being, not a human doing. Allow the eyes to stay closed and soft. Allow the lips to stay closed and soft. And just begin to notice breath traveling in and out through your nose without changing or directing anything. Feel whatever is touching a supported surface press down, be heavy, and feel all of your muscles heavy, almost like your skeleton is the hanger, and your tissues and muscles and skin are like a, just a soft coat or sweater. No effort, just hanging, supported, and nothing for you to do at all. Keep that breath traveling in and out. So as we slow down, and I like to use a lot of the Apple phone technologies as, as visuals that help me, this is where we're almost coming on that slow-mo version of the camera when you record something. We're looking to slow ourselves down. We're slowing ourselves down to invite in self-awareness. How am I feeling right now? Ask yourself that question in your mind. How do you feel? There's no right or wrong answer. Normally, we do not pause to even inquire within to ourselves. We're often very concerned about other people. How do you feel? Notice. We invite in the self-awareness, and then we choose to direct our attention to a very specific place. That's the mindfulness part. It's mindfully, consciously, intentionally slowing down and pausing. Mindfully directing our attention now to how we feel and to our breath. And then the next steps up the ladder our intentional work and we'll leverage breathing exercises that will move us into the meditative work. I'll cue some examples today that you can do seated, that you'll be able to take with you. You could do driving, you could do washing dishes, folding laundry, brushing your teeth. That's the gift of this work. And before we get started, the other gift of this work is that this world is called a practice. The entire uh, scope of what we do is called a practice because whether it's day one, day 100, 1,000, or 10,000, no matter where one is on this journey, is we are practicing slowing down. We are practicing cultivating self-awareness. We are practicing directing our intentional to something with a mindful purpose. And we practice this meditative mindset and exercises to work on ourselves, to bring ourselves down, to give ourselves this feeling ultimately of peace. Sometimes there's feelings of emotions that bubble to the surface, that is good too. But all of this is practice. So it's not if the mind wanders as we work together, the mind will wander. And I love to treat the, the wandering mind with compassion. And an image that works for me is a fluffy, adorable, delicious little puppy but totally undisciplined, totally wild on that little leash and the puppy sees squirrel, what is it from that movie? Squirrel sees a butterfly, sees a bird is gonna run. And that is our mind. Our minds are powerful and they're designed to go off into a million directions. They're in the past analyzing, they're in the future worrying, they're replaying conversations, they're planning dialogues, they're rehashing arguments on and on and on. And every person in your life adds to that complexity. So instead of having that irritated feeling, oh my God, my mind is not quiet, no one's mind is, we gently give that little tug on the leash with a smile, with loving kindness, compassion, and joy. Because when we're disciplining or teaching a puppy, at least training a puppy, we're pleased to do that. The puppies being a puppy, we know they're wild and undisciplined, and we're comfortable with that repetition of the guidance, the practice over and over. So when the mind wanders off to where you want to have lunch, what you're cooking for dinner, the email that you got to go, how much longer are we sitting here together, um, just gently see that leash, see on your mind's eye, bringing yourself back to this path of breath. All right, I'm going to cue a basic exercise that we'll work on together. It's called same breath. 
And all that means is the same length, depth of breath in on the inhale matches the same length, depth of, and the power uh, or strength of the exhale. And a nice image to use is simple bell curve. So we start at the bottom left with the inhale, we'll go up to a peak at the top of the retention. And then we come down the exact same side and we will repeat. I will count and I invite you to see the numbers and that's what's gonna give your busy mind something to focus on because we don't ask it to be quiet. We give it a very specific job and we're gonna count, I'll cue four, <clears throat> excuse me, but feel free if four makes you feel tight in the chest, too long or panicky, go to three. If you feel you have a little more space because you do breath work where it's comfortable for you, feel free to go to five. So again, with those eyes closed, maybe wiggle the fingers, maybe shift in your seat a little and resettle because maybe we've been sitting for a while and there's some sensations there. And together we'll breathe in through the nose, one, see a two, see the three to the top, four. Coming down, see the four, see a three, two, and one. So simple, together, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one. Again, see the number, one, feel the expansion of the body, two, breath in, cap four, from the biggest breath, exhale, four, to the smaller three, smallest two, smaller one. Count and feel the breath in the body, inhale, one, expand two, bigger three to biggest four, contract four, smaller air out, three, push out two and one. Maybe even your numbers grow like balloons. One, bigger two, bigger three to the biggest four. From that biggest four, smaller three, two and one. We'll keep that rhythm going. Inhale, one, two, three. See the four from four, three, two, one. I'll just say in, you're counting and seeing those numbers in the cue and feeling out feel the breath out less words from me more in your mind inhale exhale inhale exhale inhale exhale and exactly as you are, three rounds all on your own, I will be quiet. Excellent. After the last round, don't move, don't change anything, except let go of the controlled or directed breath just let yourself ease like a beach entry ease out of the work and slide back into your natural breath but remaining still here what we'd like to do is again observe how do you feel there could be so many sensations right now perhaps you feel lightheaded you've never done work like this before maybe little tingles within your body totally normal if you do practice breath work or meditation maybe you feel ah I had a nice moment, a, a, an unscheduled moment of peace in my day. Also, very important to know, if you do not do this, or if you have some stressful things happening in your life, when we slow down, this is sort of peeling off the, the layer, peeling off the surface here and peeling back the curtain. If there's a lot of emotional stuff happening, this is the exact place where the bubbling of those feelings come. So I'm saying, oh, maybe you feel peaceful and calm. Well, maybe you feel sad and teary. And I'm saying calm, this isn't my calm. Sad and teary or even anxious or nervousness of something that you have on your plate, that is success because you're practicing giving yourself and honoring the opportunity to have space to let that come up because anything to process has to first come up. So all of that is really successful work. Invite you to grab, flick through the eyes for a moment, maybe wiggle fingers and toes to come out. I'll give you an opportunity to jot down a couple of notes. Maybe it's that counting one, two, three, four, maybe the little picture of a bell curve, equal breath. Um, if this was comfortable, really write down what clicked. If this made you feel something that is labeled, I'm not labeling it as, as bad, but just for the ease of our dialogue, something sad or angry or painful, 
give yourself the respect to jot down that that's how I felt. Over time of practice, and not a long time at all, this happens pretty quickly if you commit to work um, and commit to practice, you move through those stages of discomfort. But again, in order to move to the other side, it's you can't skip it. We all know we've all processed different things in our lives. We all know it's like a tunnel. You've got to get through the tunnel. And this is a gift that allows you the space um, and the opening for those things to come or to see maybe that light at the end of the tunnel. So jot down a few notes and then I'll take us through um, another exercise together. I'll be quiet for a moment. Jot down anything. And anything that clicked about being able to stay within that exercise, for me, it's really focusing on the numbers because my mind is like a ping pong, not even a ping pong. What is it, that game machine, arcade or whatever, like bing, 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 a video game all over the place. And I have to stay on that number, add color, see your numbers in your favor, color, add sparkles or glitter, add the balloon and then feel it within your body. So coming back to our comfortable seat, give yourself a little wiggle shake out again. Bringing ourselves down from that, if we, again, if we're on a scale of one to 10 in our days, keep us ramped. We're constantly in a position of giving to people at work, uh, patients, members, whoever we are serving, then second shift to families, to our communities, to children. We're always in these roles and taking on these different jobs, all the tasks, the task intensity just of day-to-day -day life. If you could just carve out um, little slices, and when I say little, I mean one minute at a time, um, to give yourself the opportunity to go inward, to turn that beam of light that's always looking outwards, that's solving this problem, fixing, giving, and turn that light in, the dividends, it's sort of like the, the flossing of your teeth. Do you, do you feel like, oh God, I just can't wait to floss. I just can't, it's the best part of my day. No, but we accept that a lifetime, maybe you miss a floss a day or two or a week, you know, life goes on. But if you think about that ma major gap between a lifelong brusher and flosser of the teeth um, and the oral health outcome and physical health outcome of not doing that, there's a huge gap. And so this is the gift that keeps on giving, like the subtle investments um, that reap rewards over years and, and build over time. So let's take a comfortable seat again. This exercise is gonna be um, one notch, a little more, not intense, but a little more focused. And it's called four part breath. Uh, and so the image here is a square. And what we do is we inhale for the count, then we hold the retention of the breath full for the same count. Then we exhale, same count, and hold the air out for the same count. I'll do this at three because this could play with a little bit of some of the feelings, physiological feelings. What we do is we ground ourselves. Let's always start the same. We come to the seat, we ground, we go in and become aware. We start with equal breath to move ourselves into that um, meditative breath work. The peak will be four part breath. We'll come back for equal breath and then come back out easily. Um, and then we'll close and come back together to hopefully maybe any types of questions and answers. So let's give ourselves that jiggle and wiggle. I really like to use the body um, very specifically. So a little, maybe it's more subtle if you're out somewhere in public, if you're seated in your car. Um, if you're at home, jump up and down, shake, 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 shake. Come into your body. Come to that comfortable seat. It may be the same or different from the seat you had before. My legs are crossed. I'm seated on the floor. I feel my seat gently pressed down. It's heavy, grounding into the floor like that footprint in the sand. I'm going to grab my knees. I'm going to gently engage my core. So I want my core muscles to be supporting my spine. I want as much length along my spine so that there's a lot of room for the lungs to work, the diaphragm to do its thing, to have that breath expansive. I'm gonna let my chin slightly tuck and then I'm gonna soften the muscles on my face. So come back to this comfortable seat. Let's just give a little scan and soften. Inhale and notice your forehead and on the exhale, gently allow those muscles to soften and relax. Inhale, think of your eyes and your eyelids and on the exhale, let the eyelids and your eyeballs be heavy in their sockets, nothing to do. Inhale, feel your facial muscles, jaw, cheek, tongue, and let those on the next exhale relax. Inhale to your neck and shoulders. On the exhale, feel a softness as the shoulders drop down away from the ears and then radiate heaviness and light 
down your arms, out your fingertips. Inhale to your chest where your heart is. Exhale, almost feel like a brightness and ease at heart center. Inhale to the back of your neck. And on an exhale, melt down a relaxation down your back. Inhale to your hips. And on the exhale, down your legs, let your legs be heavy and radiate a light out your soles of your feet and 10 toes, being at ease. Come back to the breath and just begin to notice no changes, inhaling and exhaling. Nothing significant, just a nice rhythm. If the mind wanders off, gently with, a, with an internal, maybe a subtle lifting of the corners of your lips, a smile, bring the mind back to notice how you feel in your body, how that breath begins to travel in and out through the nose. We'll engage a few rounds of same breath. So inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. A few rounds, we've been here before. Inhaling, feel the expansion of the chest, welcoming that breath in. And on the exhale, that gentle contraction as you push the air out. See those numbers in your mind's eye, maybe add color as you welcome the breath in. And then see those same numbers as you push the air out. A few more rounds of in and out. Breath in and out. Now we'll take the next breath into three. One, two, three. Hold that breath. One, two, three. Exhale. One, two, three. And hold the breath out. One, two, three. Inhale. C going up the side of the square. One, two, three top of the square we hold one two three exhale down the right side of the square one two three and hold breath out one two three all cue breath in hold breath out hold breath in hold breath out and hold, in, hold, out, hold. Last one with me, in, hold, out, hold. A few rounds on your own, tracing that square, keeping the attention on the feeling of the breath work in the body, and the visual of that square to keep your mind focused and intentional. A few lovely rounds right here, right now, exploring this exercise. I will come back in just a few rounds. When you are ready to return to same breath now, just come off to in and out, come back to your count of about four, and a few nice rounds of that, moving away from the square breath to more of that bell curve equal in and out, and a few rounds to let yourself come down from that intensity. And then after probably about five, seven or eight rounds, Allow totally to let go of the breath, just natural in and out, but stay still right here just for a moment longer. Stay here, breath uncontrolled, naturally in and out. You will never stop the waves, learn how to surf. There will always be the challenges coming our way, things that are close to us, personal, professional, family, things in our lives that um, just the normal bumps and twists and turns, sometimes pretty big ones. Societally, we have huge things, 
huge waves coming to us that we're all navigating together. We will never be able to stop or to control that massive ocean. What you have is a gift of a physical body that's been given to you that's equipped with mechanisms to rev yourself up when needed. So if you needed to outrun that tar tar tiger, there is that fight or flight and adrenaline and cortisol that will flood your system to give you that aptitude. Unfortunately, with all of these waves that come at us 24 seven these days with all the technology, we are not meant to operate at that fight or flight, pushing that chemical reaction in our body all the time. The opposite of fight or flight is rest and digest. The master key, and in this example, the surfboard to navigate the waters and to find ourselves or encourage or direct ourselves to find rest and digest is using the beautiful gift of the breath, one inhale, one exhale at a time. Notice how you feel. And it's in this place that we build our capacity, fill our tank, our account to navigate those stresses, to build our own emotional intelligence, to cultivate more clarity, more focus, more energy. See the back to that iPhone image, your battery has been filled. You were tapping into a resource and a source to charge. Together, let's take a deep inhale, fill up the lungs to the biggest capacity and then hold it and allow yourself to sit with that uncomfortable feeling, hold that air. You are capable of being uncomfortable and strong enough to be a little bit discom in discomfort. Hold and together with a sigh, <sighs> let it all go. Notice how you feel. Slowly we'll come back. We will move our fingers and toes. Let the eyes blink a few times. Reset the eyes and the gaze. And let's go back to grab that paper and pen when you're ready. Maybe shake out the body and the legs. And think about, again, some of the exercises that we did together. Can you jot down anything that helped you cue, helped keep your focus and attention on either a square breath or our bell curve breath, the count, the visual, Jot down maybe puppy on a leash or whatever worked for you to bring yourself back. Another uh, very popular saying in meditation and mindfulness worlds is the monkey mind. So the mind is very jumpy, undisciplined, and will run off in all the directions like a monkey. And we gently bring the monkey back <laughs> into the path that we're on with our breath. We're focusing on breath. So again, there's so many fun images that we use and we have them with lightness, not with judgment or you know scolding ourselves if minds wander. And then um, before opening it up for Q&A, which is um, I welcome all questions and dialogue and, and uh, interested, very much interested in your experience and how you feel and felt, um, is the homework, always the signing homework. Uh, so the homework is as follows. Three times a day, commit to one minute, just one. We all have, no matter who, the President of the United States has three minutes three single minute um, um, sections or times where you commit to taking, it's about 10-ish, maybe call it 15-ish, depending on how long your breath is, between 10 and 15 breaths that you're aware of. So some suggestions could be when you wake up in the morning, maybe you're waking up and you're rushing, going to make that coffee while you're making your coffee. So you don't even have to change your day. You're just choosing to bring an intentional behavior and action and practice with you. Um, other suggestions could be when you're about to start your work day, and this could be a bookend for your day, especially if you work at home where it all flows together, work and life. Um, when you sit down at your computer before you lift that laptop or click on um, to say, I'm gonna take those 10 to 15 breaths. Conversely, at the end of a day, really nice to bookend your day. If you get in your car, if you're on site in a hospital, um, or in the office, maybe right when you park, before you go into your office or hospital or location, you take those 10 to 15 breaths. And then maybe when you come back into your car at the end of the day or the bus um, or sitting on a bus, gazing out the window, that's a perfect way to really set 
aside a slice, a sliver for yourself. And then of course, at bedtime, at night, or washing dishes, wherever that may be. But invest in yourself. Don't ask, is this working? Is what working? Don't even set a metric to measure yourself. This is one place in life where we're not looking for measurement and we're not looking for success or failure. We're just looking to be curious and interested in how do I feel? The right answer is not going to be all the time nice and fluffy through the daisy fields with the rainbows and unicorns. No, sometimes it's teary and weepy and emotional. That is all good. But you are becoming aware of you because those waves won't stop, but you're going to be able to navigate on that beautiful surfboard. So thank you so much. Um, it is a humble honor and pleasure to share some of the things that I've learned over the past 19 years. Uh, and please feel free there, the chat. Um, I don't know if anyone can come on uh, verbally the way that the uh, call is set up, but I would love any feedback and feedback doesn't necessarily mean, oh, that was great and I loved it. If there's something that didn't work and it felt uncomfortable, we have a few minutes here to just sit and, and talk about it. I may not have all the answers, but um, if it's a feeling that came up probably in 19 years, I've either felt it or heard about it. Thank you so much, Carrie. That was very relaxing and hope everyone enjoyed that, that little taste of a Zentari session. And just to share with everyone, this is something that Carrie and a couple of other um, yoga and meditation and mindfulness partners that she has um, have provided that to our employees it's about three times a week I think. Carrie is that correct we do that many sessions? Yes yeah. yes and yes so, that would have been a good thing to talk about thanks Jennifer I was so I was so lightheaded myself um, one of the things that we offered when all of our employees went home is um, we were when Centauri started we were a very small office so we had very strong relationships across multiple levels and our executive leaders knew that I always wanted to create this corporate mindfulness program and I had even named it and I'm not a creative person but I had this name Centauri my wonderful marketing team even got me a logo um, and we had done it in our office a few times just ad hoc just for fun a couple of team leaders would ask to do a team building experience or it was like national meditation day and we would do things in person and i had this big vision of traveling to all the offices when i wasn't so busy and rolling out a program in person and this whole vision when the life stopped and we went home the executive leadership of our company were very concerned about everyone's mental health and dealing with the stress and the anxiety. And they said, oh yeah, Carrie had that thing she wanted to do. Well, have her do it, do it remotely. So I had never done anything remotely or virtually like this, um, but I have two partners within the organization, a director of social work, so she brings a different lens. Um, and another, our director of legal compliance is a yoga and mindfulness teacher as well. And we were given the opportunity by our leadership team to create um, a five day a week. It started as five days a week, 20 minutes a day. The re sessions are recorded, so not everyone has the flexibility for their day and time to stop what they're doing and, and take 20 minutes. So if you don't, it's recorded and you can watch it later. We are down to three times a week, um, but we offer this three live sessions a week um, as a gift to ourselves um, and to our employees to take what's very stressful jobs because even outside of COVID and everything that's happened in 2020 and beyond, uh, we are in an industry of giving, um, whether we're giving directly to a health plan member or a patient, whether we are doing the work to support those that do the giving, um, again, coming back to those withdrawals. So the goal of this work was to create a little slice just a little taste of an opportunity to build those resilience tools. And Zentari was formalized and born. All right, well, no one's taking us up on the questions or chat, um, but as, okay. as Gary said, um, both of us are, are open to any questions. We did wanna leave you with a quote. Um, so, we found this and just thought, uh, you know, start by doing what's necessary, then do what's possible, and suddenly you're doing the impossible. So we want to thank everyone for joining us today and hope that you found the information that I was able to share about some of the things that Centauri did um, through this process and over this past year and a half, and uh, the Centauri session that, that Carrie's just provided as valuable and that it assists you in adjusting your sales and leads to smooth seas ahead. So again, Carrie and I are happy 
to answer any questions with any time left if anyone has anything. All right, well, this is our contact information. Um, you can get that from Julie if um, she's sending out the slides. I'm not sure she's doing that, but she certainly can provide our contact information if you want to ask questions, maybe on a, a side form or something you don't want to do in a group. We are also uh, very open to that. So thank you so much uh, for your time today, and I uh, hope you have a calm and restful rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.